five, four, three, two, one. Welcome everyone to episode 286 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Eric. Corey. Today's topic, uh, it's going to be our 2017 Games Preview Part 2 and also Will's birthday episode. Hey, Will! Happy birthday, Will, which is why he's not with us. He's out <laughs> celebrating with his friends. <laughs> Uh, do you think last minute too do you think it's a lady no did he tell us what he's doing he no didn't. him and him and his bros are going to be out broing it up he said he, he said his friends playing something maybe it's a lady i don't know because i thought he would have told us if it was a guy friend and like with guy plans but like what would they be doing broing it up just out, bro, on, out at bro, the gym probably or road road trip <laughs> It's a night at the gym. Special night at the gym. Maybe they all dressed up like the Final Fantasy 15 characters, and they're just driving around with swords. Yes, yeah. that would one's be got fun. a camera, one's got a book. Well, Will's got to be Gladiolus, right? Uh yeah, I guess I guess he would be. Big mountain of muscle. So yeah, that's our that's our topic for today. Does anyone have anything they want to tease for later on in the episode? Anything new? <sighs> Uh, I started playing Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Nice. Um, other than that, no, I didn't get a chance to play anything else. Okay. Corey? I didn't play anything new new, but I did play for the first time Mobius Final Fantasy on my huh? phone, uh, <laughs> adding to the mobile games that I play, and that's it these days. But, uh, yeah, that. Okay. Sounds good. All right, well, let's get into our 2017 Games Preview Part 2. We'll start with Eric. Eric wasn't here last week. Let's hear uh, one of the games that you're uh, maybe not excited for, but looking forward to, uh, uh, interested in. Yeah, so I did seven games. I guess I'll start with, since this one is actually already out, but uh, I just thought it was worth mentioning because I think it's really good. Um, shit. Corey, I'm sorry. Do you have the release dates pulled up? Yes, I can. I can read them for you. Uh, for which? Game? Yeah, I'm looking for the Hitman Complete Collection. Hitman: The Complete First Season, January 31st. Ah, January 31st. So not too far off. Uh, you will be able to get all of the Hitman season in one package. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this game. I played the first, like the prologue, which is set in Paris, and I played um, the second episode, which is in Sapienza. Uh, but I did purchase all of the. Um, the different episodes piecemeal when PSN had a good sale going on. I just haven't had a chance to play any of them yet. Uh, but you're going to get a ton of content there. I think that it's it's just totally worth uh, exploring all the different areas and um, just the different ways that you can approach them just over and over. There's just endless amounts of gameplay. Um, and there are the, uh, what the hell is it called? The special elusive targets that pop up every now and again, which I have not taken part of, but by all accounts uh, on the podcasts and things like that, that I listen to, they are a blast. So I wanted to make everyone aware that that's coming out. And I think it is uh, well worth your time and money on January 31st. That's a neat idea. The, the, those elusive, elusive targets. Yeah. Honestly, the, the whole way that they made this Hitman game with the episodes and, and doing that, the extra stuff that they just keep updating. Like you were saying with the elusive targets, uh, I think they pretty much nailed it. Mm. So okay. that's my first game. Sounds good. What do you got, Corey? My first game is, well, let me tell you what my first game is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Metal Gear survive. This this was pretty big news when it was announced a few months back, but I didn't pay attention at the time, so this was kind of my first time discovering what the game is all about. And uh, it's a Konami joint based in the Metal Gear universe, but the first one without Hideo Kojima's participation. Metal Gear was his baby, and now he is no longer with the studio. So this is uh, Konami's first foray into the universe without him. What it is, is it's a co-op action game set in the Phantom Pain universe, but with zombies. Uh, the setup for it, Mother, it's, it's yeah, so Phantom after the Phantom Pain, Mother Base is in flames, Big Boss, Miller, take off, and then a wormhole opens, sucking everything into a parallel universe, hence zombies. Uh, so oh, I, dear. I was reading a preview of, of it on a website called Trusted Reviews, 
and they quoted uh, quoted Hideo Kojima when he was speaking with IGN, saying, "The Metal Gear games are about political fiction and espionage. Where do zombies fit in with that?" Uh, he was in good spirits about it. He wasn't uh, very critical. He was making jokes and stuff, but uh, that's that's what it is. It's uh, it's it's Metal Gear zombies, I guess. The uh, there was a reveal trailer that we saw. To me, it does kind of appear to be a, a shameless cash grab, but I I personally think it will be awesome. Uh, they're reusing a lot of the assets from the Phantom Pain, and those gameplay mechanics were a whole lot of fun. That whole like idea of uh, uh, espionage playground, for lack of a better word. I think a lot of that stuff will translate really well into hunting and avoiding and fighting and destroying zombies. Do you think it'll sell well, though? Yes. For being a cash grab, I think. Do so. you really? I think. I don't, don't you think, think enough? Pe- don't you think enough people are 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 pissed off at Konami to not? I don't think enough people that? know. I think really? there are. Really? I think in, in in the internet circles, in the internet forums, and where we read things, yes. But in, in terms of the mainstream, people are going to see Metal Gear, and that's all they need. I feel like Metal Gear is a pretty like serious video game. Yeah. That's. I don't think that's one that like casual gamers that don't know about these things are into. I think it's got too many sales to say casual gamers aren't into it. I don't know, man. I think it's just that popular where there's enough hardcore gamers that are into it. I don't know. That could be. I think it'll sell well. I think it'll 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 uh, mar- it's easy to market. You know, it's zombies and and shooting and guns and it's gonna look fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, there was also a 15-minute gameplay trailer from TGS, and it is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. No release date yet. I'm tired of zombies. I was going to say that, too. I was like, well, zombies are tired, too. <laughs> very, very tired. To us. I, well, yeah. I got tired of zombies, like, maybe three years ago. Yeah. Casual okay. gamers, bro. They're not playing this game. Maybe this is the one that the casual gamer plays, actually. Yeah. The casual Metal Gear. To draw them into the Metal Gear universe. Yeah. Although, even it, like like Corey said, it's nothing like the Metal Gear universe, really. Well, as I always say, I use my, my girlfriend's brother and his roommate as like my gauge for <laughs> the, the casual gamers. And I yeah. can guarantee you they have no idea who Hideo Kojima is, but they love Metal Gear. So. Oh, really? That's all I, I base find that, that I find that interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, if there's something I like, I like to know as much as I can about it. I, I just can't imagine being that passive about it, you know? Yeah. No. Hmm. Maybe I just like to know things, you know? Humble brag, yeah. Dan? Humble brag? <laughs> no, it's just more that I like to know things. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I don't, I don't, I don't like mysteries. I hear you. Anyway. Uh, my first game is a game called Near Automata. Automata? Own it. Automata. Uh, it developed by Platinum Games and published by Square Enix. It's coming to the PS4 on March 7th. PC at some point in 2017. There's no firm date yet, but people seem to think that it could also be the same day. I guess Square Enix hasn't necessarily confirmed that or denied that, but some people think it's going to be the same day. Who knows? It's an action RPG that's a spinoff from the Dragon Guard series, which I've never played but was always interested in. The setting is a proxy war between machines created by otherworldly invaders and the last remnants of humanity. And you play as a combat android and her robot companion. It's a it's a platinum game. It's a very bayonetta esque, but it's also a lot more open world, which uh, had me sucked right in. You know. It's got the Bayonetta-like mechanics in an open world. Uh, that's my cup of tea right there. So, Definitely interested in it. I've read a lot of glowing previews of it. I guess the demo was excellent. There is a demo for PC, both PC and PS4. A lot of glowing things said about is it. Is it out? I believe it's out now, yeah. I, I wanted to have it tried before today so I oh, could nice. give a recommendation, but I, of course, didn't get the opportunity. So, Perhaps I will download that. Yeah. Near... Automata. It looks cool. Automa- automata. You can see the Bayonetta influence. It's, pl- it's uh, Yeah, definitely yeah. looks a lot like Bayonetta. So, yep. that's my first game. Eric, what do you got? Uh, secondly, I will go to another game that harkened back to Bayonetta to me. Uh, I only briefly played the first Gravity Rush, but the second Gravity Rush is coming out 
on PS4 on January 20th, which is right around the corner. Um, I watched some gameplay of this the other day on GameSpot, or no, I think it was on IGN actually. Um, it really got me interested. Um, what I played of the first Gravity Rush, I played on Vita, and I, I really liked it. I just never went back to it for whatever reason. But basically, you were a girl named Kat, and she, you kind of control her center of gravity. So she maneuvers herself through the or you maneuver her through the world, like kind of twisting and turning through air uh, by controlling her gravity. It's it's very strange to watch and look at, but uh, it's it's also like beautiful to watch and look at. Uh, and the 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 way that she kind of floats in the air, uh, the combat is really unlike many other things that I've seen. Um, but the only thing that really came to mind to me was Bayonetta, how it's just kind of frantic and mm-hmm. kind of bouncing back and forth at your, your enemies and things like that. Um, uh, one of the big things about Gravity Rush is the art style. This one looks far more lively than the, the first one did to me, more colorful. Um, it, it very much looks like uh, a comic book or you can definitely tell the, the anime influence in it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually really excited about this game. I wasn't, it wasn't too on my radar. I try to get most of the, the PS4 exclusives and I, I think I am going to pick this one up. Huh? What's the release date? Uh, January 20th. 20th. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Okay. Corey? A Friday release, right? Seven. Uh, tomorrow's the thirteenth. Yep. Yeah, it is a Friday. I love that. I do too, because this is the day after your payday. Yeah. And the weekend, you know, you get to play on the weekend. Ow. That makes no difference to me. <laughs> Sometimes that's same worse. here. Um, okay, my next game is a game I talked a little bit about a couple months ago. It's called Old Time Hockey. Uh, the I'll take the website description. Experience hockey the way it was meant to be played in this old-school arcade-style hockey game where blood on the ice is just another day at the rink. 70s afros, big mustaches, no helmets, dirty hits, bench-clearing brawls, goalie fights, stick fights, ref abuse, and locker room language. That's old-time hockey. Players in this league live by one simple rule. Never look at the puck, just take the body. Timely hits are crucial in this dangerous sport. We're getting on fire is the difference between winning and losing. So it definitely has the look of an NHL 94 Obviously, though, with improved animations and that high-definition fidelity that you'd expect from uh, a game coming out in this day and age. And the game does focus on Bush League hockey, but there is a story mode that sounds a lot like Slapshot, and I guess that was their inspiration for that. Um, But their overall goal is to recreate couch gaming from the 90s, and a couple other games they cited for inspiration were NBA Jam, Tecmo Bowl, and Blades of Steel. Um, and as such, this will feature multiplayer, but not online, Mm. um, which is interesting. I think that was more of a financial decision just based on what I was reading rather than, you know, what they were going for. Uh, but, but they definitely are trying to get that, uh, recreate that couch gaming thing. Like that, that scene in swingers where they're sitting around playing, uh, yeah, whatever that hockey game was. NHL was that NHL ninety two or ninety three NHL PA? I don't think it was an NHL game. I think it was. It was an NHL game. Really? Yeah. Because you can make the players head bleed. I thought you couldn't do that in yep. NHL games. It was like ninety two though. It was. It was. I really didn't start playing that a lot until like ninety four, ninety five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm in. Yeah, I'm definitely into. It looks awesome. I've been saying for a very long time that I want more arcadey sports games. And uh, this sounds sounds to be right up my alley. Um, it's being developed by V7 Entertainment, which is a studio out of Vancouver. I looked at their releases, and they didn't have any familiar ones. But uh, if there's a studio set to make a hockey game, might as well be in Vancouver, right? Absolutely. That's coming to PS4, uh, Xbox One, and Steam in early early this year, they said. So. Uh-huh. It looks like 93 is the year that they were playing. On Swingers? Yeah. NHL 93. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely in for that one. That's a that's a definite buy. Yeah, do yourself a favor if you're at least bit least bit interested. Go uh, go to their website. It's a lot of fun. It has a cool, yeah. neat aesthetic, and it's just uh, the shitty graphics with uh, Donnie Brook going on in the background. <laughs> Wait, I lied. It's 94. It is, is it 94? 94. It's 94 because they have they, there's uh, on Wikipedia they put up like uh, some dialogue. Uh, I guess they took fights out of 94, and one of the characters said, I wish they still had fights in this game so I could bitch slap Wayne. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, he t- took Jeremy Roenick and made Wayne Gretzky's head bleed. <laughs> Why'd they get rid of fighting? It was the best part of the old version. And Sue replies, I think kids were hitting each other or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a classic, that one. Oh, no, they're, <laughs> according to this, they're playing NHL PA 93. Yeah. 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 Wait. Yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. NHL PA 90, Hockey 93. Okay. Yeah, I think that was, that was a different series than the EA ones, I think. Yeah. NHL PA games. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the dialogue was inaccurate to what they were actually playing. I think so. I'm just reading yeah. a Reddit comment. This scene never made any sense to me because there was no blood in NHL 94. They're talking about being no fighting, so it has to be 94. But then he makes Gretzky bleed, and that doesn't happen in 94 either. They're probably playing NHL PA 93. And the person below him comments, indeed they were. So Yeah, it says, however, this is not completely accurate. As adding bleeding players were also removed, they were playing NHL PA Hockey 93, which had mm-hmm. blood and fighting. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Sounds good. Anywho. For my next game, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, developed and published by Tail Worlds Entertainment, coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. I know we recently turned on listener Ryan H. to Mountain Blade Warband. So this is going to be the, the the newer version. It's a prequel to Mountain Blade Warband. Uh, it takes place approximately 200 years before. During the decline of the Calradian Empire, which is an ag- an, an Analogous, anag- you know, similar to the anag- an- analogous, analogous. That's what I'm going for. Analogous to the fall of the Roman Empire and rise of early medieval kingdoms. And I actually, I wasn't sure. I hadn't heard anything about about this game in quite a while. But there was literally, I don't know, five o'clock this afternoon. I checked PC Gamer, and there was an article with a you know an interview from the developers about Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. And they're working on it, they, but they made sure to stress that they're going to take their time, make sure it's done, make sure it's complete, make sure it runs well before before they try to put it on the market, uh, which I which I definitely appreciate. Um, sometime this year, they said, no no time frame. So. But yeah, Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2. Uh, did you, either of you guys play Mountain Blade? Uh, Mountain Blade? No, never got around no. to it. It's good stuff. It's uh, one of the classic janky action RPGs. <laughs> it's really good, but uh, really, really janky. I played it recently. It's the one with the really good Game of Thrones mod, too. Mm-hmm. One of the really good Game of Thrones mods. So, you know, you recruit troops and stuff and, and, and raise your standing amongst the things. And uh, you can siege warfare, like take over castles and stuff. And I was doing a battle and there was just a bunch of guys stuck in a wall. And I just, for probably half an hour, just swung at the wall until they slowly, slowly hit, <laughs> slowly died. Because <laughs> if you like, if I quit the battle out, it's it's like you retreat and you, you know, quote unquote lose. So I didn't want to do that. So I just hit the wall until they all finally went down. Janky, but really good. So, Eric, what do you got? Uh, and my last game that I did that has a actual release date coming out on March 7th, Ghost Recon Wildlands from Tom Clancy. Uh, <clears throat> I was really uh, into this game when I saw the first trailer for it at um, E3. And I, I watched, rewatched a couple trailers this evening before we, we started. I still think it looks really cool. I just am a little bit worried that the sandbox open world playground thing is getting a little tired. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it just screams far cry and last of us or not last of us. I'm sorry. Um, just cause mm-hmm. it, it's just, it seems like the same kind of thing. The only, the only difference with this is you can do it with a four player team, which I know I'm not going to do. So that makes no difference to me whatsoever. Right. Um, so the co-op is is a pretty big draw of this game. With that being said, it looks really cool. If you're if you're still interested, I probably I probably will get this at some point. But that's right before the Switch comes out, pro. So probably not at release. Um, but yeah, it's you, you basically are fighting against the cartel uh, with cocaine and things of that nature. And it's it's got the whole you know choose your way to do things going for it. You can do stealth. You can do action. Just go in guns blazing. Whatever you want to do. 
Um, it looks really good. The the environments look awesome. The vehicles look great, but it's still kind of the same thing. Yeah, like you said, it's like it the table. it's like four player me- Metal Gear kind of Metal yeah. Gear Solid. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Five. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it looks it looks like it's it's a really well made game if if you're looking for something like that. So, and the villain actually looks pretty badass. <laughs> if you haven't seen him. I would highly recommend Googling a picture. Uh, Amazon, not yeah, Amazon is actually doing pairing with uh, the, the folks over at Tom Clancy's camp and they're making like a live television thing for this. Nice. There's a teaser up on the website. I watched it. <laughs> it actually looks pretty cool. Amazon's got their fingers and everything, don't they? They do. They're all over the place. So check that out. March 7th. Very nice. Corey. My next game is a action adventure RPG published by Nintendo for the 3DS called Ever Oasis. It's the game focuses on the character of Tatu, who has to set up a village in the middle of a desert as a launching point to find his lost older older brother. It has a uh, ancient Egyptian kind of aesthetic. Uh, Gameplay-wise, you create a party of three characters, go out and forage for currency, which some kind of currency, which had a weird name that I don't remember, uh, in caves and dungeons with all sorts of puzzles. Uh, and then you return that currency to the village you're building and use it to create shops and gear. Um, not much has said, been said about the game since its reveal at E3 last year. In fact, I couldn't find any recent news about the game. So... There's very little to go on. But I did read um, in one of the previews that the guy behind the Secret of Mana game is now heading the studio that is creating Ever Oasis. So people are anticipating uh, a lot of parallels in the the three-character party and the real-time combat and all that kind of stuff. Uh, And that does have a release date of sometime in 2017. The game actually sounded a lot more exciting to me, and then I started doing the research on it, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that that's one I kind of remember from E3 last year. Yeah, like, I like the whole idea of building building your, your village from the ground up, but when yeah. I was reading that, it was just, like, one currency that you take and then use to build stuff. It kind of sound it screamed, like, mobile... Game, yeah, rather you rather know. than needing specific resources right. to, right, gotcha. Okay, my last game, Cosmic Star Heroin. Are you guys familiar with Cosmic Star Heroin? No, no sir. I've actually been following it for a little while. It's developed and published by Zeboid Games. It's a 1632-bit style RPG inspired by Chrono Trigger, Fantasy Star, and Lunar RPGs. Uh, it follows a woman who's like a special agent for like a galactic government and her uh her i don't know you know her and her party a group of misfit type of friends as they you know do what you do in in your old school rpgs uh but what got what you know once again the the art style drew me in for this one um i can't even remember where i heard about it but it was i've been following this game for years and was excited to hear that it was actually coming out this year I feel like there's a date. I feel like it's coming out in late February. I meant to look it up and, and I forgot, but it looks like um, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, it's got Chrono Trigger. Yep, the old Fantasy Star RPGs and Lunar Silver Star story. You remember those games, Corey? Oh yeah. Uh, it's got influences from those. Really cool soundtrack too. It's got like a '80s um, electronic type of soundtrack. Sounds sounds pretty good. But, yeah, it looks cool. I'm into it. I, I knew nothing about it. Yeah, it's f- flown below the radar for a while. I want to say it was like three years ago too when I first first heard about it. But how are you going to play it, Dan? Uh, it's on Steam. Oh, it is. I already have it on my wish list. Oh, it's not on Steam yet, but it's coming to Steam. Gotcha. Yeah, PS4, Steam. I was watching uh, some some. It was like a demo that they had at E3, maybe. But they were talking with one of the developers who said it's also going to be on Xbox One eventually after they get the PS4 and PC release settled. So, yep, that'll be my old school game for the year. It'll be my, it'll be 20, 2017 Stardew Valley for me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's all I've got. 
Eric. All right, Thanks. Dan. And for my the start of my games that do not have a set release date, this isn't a game so much as a, a new developed story to add on to a game um, from the Uncharted series is Uncharted the last the lost legacy i'm sorry um and this will focus on chloe frazier who's a, apparently a pretty popular character in the series um and she will be sidekicked by nadine who was debuted in uncharted 4 i liked nadine quite a bit actually i thought she was a good character um she's kind of a mercenary for hire type and she kicked nathan's ass quite a bit and it was funny um, so this takes place in India, and I know you'll all be shocked to hear that they're after an ancient artifact to keep it out of the hands of somebody else. Oh, okay. A shocking turn of events in Uncharted. Um, <laughs> but there's no release date for it. I'm sure it will be very well made and polished and very well told. So there's that. Uh-huh. Very nice. Corey, next up. I've got a game that doesn't have a release date. It was supposed to come... I don't know when it was supposed to come out. I guess it doesn't matter. But it's called Lego Worlds. And um, it's Minecraft with, with Legos. Something that should have happened many, many years ago. And it was actually put on Steam in early access back in June of 2015. I didn't realize it's been around that long. Wow. Um, and I read through some of the reviews on Steam, which you can go and you can go and buy it right now. It's 15 bucks. Um People think it's a good start, but that there's not much going on yet in the game, which kind of makes sense. I mean, Minecraft has been iterated as iterated on itself for how many years now? It's been out a while. Eight years. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. I, I, I assume it would come out this year. It's been in early access long enough. It's time for full release. Um, I don't know. It, it got decent reviews on Steam, but a lot of people said it got boring pretty quick and that they need to add some more stuff to it, so we shall see. Uh-huh. I like the idea of it, though. Sure. Like you said, it's been a long time coming, that yeah. type of idea. Yeah. All right. Eric, what do you got next? Uh, next one for me is Crackdown 3, which is an Xbox One exclusive. Um the cool thing about this game for me is the the art style is really neat. How it almost looks like the characters were made separate from the rest of the game, and they're just kind of pasted on there. I don't know. It looks really neat. It's a very cool yeah. art style. Um, but the big thing that's uh, supposedly about this game is the completely destructible environments. Which I watched some videos of it tonight. I'll believe it when I see it. I think that's a big reason that this game has been delayed. Um, I don't know. I feel like expectations are, are rapidly decreasing for this game the longer that it, it people wait for it to come out, um, especially with the recent events going on over there at Microsoft canceling yeah. all their exclusive games. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. It, it, again, it does look very neat. I've, have either of you played any of the Crackdown games? I played the first Crackdown. I haven't played any of them. Yeah, what, it was really, what, it what was, they? It was really it cool. Seems, you. You play like a paramilitary type of type of like super soldier uh, yeah. with up- upgradable abilities and uh, lots of weapons, lots of different weapons you can do, and you get like superpowers almost. Yeah, it seemed almost like um, Saints Row. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a, an open world sandbox again, but this has yeah. like completely destructible environments, which yeah. again I'll believe when I see. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's if, a tall if, that's a tall task is the, it, the it destructible is. environments. And if you watch the video that they showed of like the, the multiplayer with the destructible environments, like Battlefield does a pretty nice job with that kind of stuff. And if this looks as good as as they showed, it it'll be a pretty good accomplishment for them. But I again I I have my reservations. Okay. So, yeah, I really I really like the the first crackdown. I don't I I feel like I had the second but never really played it all that much. Mm-hmm. That would that was at the time when I would ha- like bought every new video game that came out. Right. Even if I wasn't even going to play it. So. And that does not have a release date yet, but uh, hopefully that will be a big Xbox exclusive release this fall. Is it all, It's also coming to PC, too. Is it part of the games, games um, every, every, anywhere or game everywhere or whatever it is? Right now, listed on the Xbox.com website, the only platform listed is Xbox One. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. 
Sounds That's good. Corey what, you, three. Corey, what do you got? I have a game called Neo. It's an action RPG developed by Team Ninja, who did Ninja Gaiden, Dead or Alive. And they actually did the Hyrule Warriors Legends for 3DS, I guess. Uh, and that game is coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 only. It's set in a fictionalized version of the uh, 1600s Japan, wherein Japan is engulfed in civil war uh, just before the Tokugawa shogunate takes over. And the story is based on the life of William Adams, who was a real-life Western samurai. And I guess uh, the game starts where you're on a ship and you end up in Japan and become a, a samurai. Um, as, as the player controlling William, you guide him through the game world, both physically and politically. That's what the story is all about, is building alliances and, and all that kind of stuff. Apparently, the gameplay is reminiscent of the Soul series in a lot of different ways. Uh, guiding a hero through practical areas, rife with monsters, uh, apparently very difficult has a bonfire and souls mechanic. There's all that kind of stuff in there. Um, that's out February 7th in North America. I've actually heard a lot about this game because one of the podcasts I listened to over the summer was 8-4 Play out of Japan. And they a lot of Japanese public publications got um, copies of the game to play in advance of its release for, for feedback. Uh, and they were not too big on it. They had a lot of complaints about the game. They said it was a great idea but it really fell short of the mark in a lot of different ways. But uh, they have you know, worked on the game quite a bit since then, so hopefully all their complaints are put to rest, and uh, it sound, it, it, it's as cool as it sounds. Okay. A Samurai cool. Souls game. Come on, guys. I, I know. Hey, you say Souls game, and my interest peaks. <laughs> Mine too. Although Dark Souls 3, I didn't really play much at all. Yeah. I can understand. Yeah. Uh, real quick, Crackdown is supposedly coming to Windows. Oh, okay. Windows 10, I would assume the the mark the whatever they call their stupid app store marketplace, what what have you. <laughs> they should just put it on Steam for God's sake. But anyway, yeah. that'd be too easy. Uh, it would be too easy. They'd make too much money that way. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Eric, what do you got? <clears throat> uh, my next one, without a release date. Um, Xbox One exclusive, also Play Anywhere, Windows 10 member, Sea of Thieves. Uh, this was one that I was really excited about when they first showed it off. Um, and again, my excitement has slowly dwindled from there, but only because of the type of game it is. I still think it's a cool idea. Um, so basically, it's an open world co-op pirate adventure game where you and your friends kind of team up in like an MMO style way. And you get on your pirate boat and you go looking for treasures, basically. Um, you get treasure maps and you have to kind of navigate your way with a compass to find the correct islands um, and find where the treasures are. Um, the cool thing is you have to... It's kind of like the division in a way where you you go and retrieve the treasure, but you have to take it to like a safe zone. I can't remember what the safe zones are called here. Um but you have to get it to like a safe area before you can see what you got or before you actually have it. Um, but along the way, you can be attacked by other groups of pirates, other player pirates, uh, which can be boat combat or like you can jump on another another team's boat and attack them with your guns, whatever, whatever the case may be, and steal all of their booty. Um, so it sounds really cool to me. I just don't know as if I have the time or number of friends really at this point to play it mm -hmm. that's my concern too eric i hope they have a way of making it fun for a single player like maybe just a little give a single player like a, a little dinghy that they can control themselves you know but yeah i, I, I want to count the, on it the mechanics and stuff all sound really good but like you said you have it seems like you have to have a group of friends that are willing to play with you at the same time you know yeah i'm just going to read a, a little description from the sea of thieves xbox website the freedom of the pirate life awaits in sea of thieves a shared world adventure game filled with unknown dangers and loot for the taking be the pirates you want to be and share adventures with friends in a world where every sail on the horizon is another crew of players with unknown intent it's very much one of those uh make your own fun games but you hopefully are making that fun with your friends which makes it that much more fun Mm -hmm. uh, but I already really don't play anything 
with other people aside from Rocket League, but those are people I don't know, and FIFA. That's really it. So, I don't know if this game is for me, but I, I still think it, it has a lot of promise. And no release date set for that one yet. But hopefully this year. Yeah. That's by Rare, correct? Yep. Hopefully it's going to be Rare's return to form <laughs> after them just making crappy Connect games for the past however many years. How dare you? <laughs> there's got to be a gem in there. No, there's not. Never mind. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Corey. My last one I have is a game you guys won't care about, but I'm mildly interested in it. It's called Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. It's a hack and slash game developed by Omega Force, who has done the Dynasty Warriors games. And I guess it is just like a Dynasty Warriors game, except it's set in the Berserk manga universe, which is, I, I, I don't read manga, but I did watch the recent uh, trilogy. Well, I only watched the first two, so I can't say that. Uh, films in the Berserk Golden Age arc series, and I loved them. I thought they were really cool. Um, so that I'm kind of kind of into. And this game actually is already out in Japan. It scored a 35 out of 40 in Japan's Famitsu magazine. Um, so that's a pretty good score, I think. Yeah, that's uh, five or wait. They all gave them nines or something like that. Nine point something. I don't know. Whatever. Good good score in Famitsu. Uh, and that's coming Oops. coming out to PS3, PS4, Vita. NPC February 21th in North America. What's the hook for the Berserk? I th- I've manga. talked about it on here before. Um, definitely the first Golden Age arc number one is on Netflix. Uh, so check it out. It's it's um, it's gory. It's very gory. Blood and guts. Military. Um, set in a, like modern day. No, it's it's historical medi- medieval. Um, but also with that like Japanese flair, you know, uh, style, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, but yeah, over the top gore and and it's very sexual too. <laughs> I think the game was they were trying to get it an adult only rating, like they were trying mm-hmm. to uh, figure out how to do that and still sell it because it's an important part of 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 yeah. Uh, of the manga in the series. Well, so. at least they wanted to stay true to the to the source material. I hate right. when they try to, you know, dumb it down. Yeah, yeah, it's but very definitely, bloody. Definitely check it out. the The main character's name is Guts, and his sword is like seven feet long. It's like a <laughs> cloud high wind sword, and he just nice. just slices through like several guys at all at once and rips them open. I don't know. It's one of those things. It's all about spectacle. You know, you're not watching it for the the stories. So do you think, uh, who was it that did Omega Force that does the yeah. Dynasty Warrior games? Do you think they're gonna they're gonna be the next Telltale where they do a Dynasty Warrior Dynasty Warrior style game for different IPs? Why not? Because they made they made Zelda. they made uh, yeah the uh, what the hell is that game called now? Hyrule Warriors. Warriors. Hyrule Warriors. Thank you. With that, I actually spent a lot of time playing. Yeah, and enjoyed. I'm okay with that until I get sick of it. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Anywho, that's it, Corey. That's it. All right, what do you got, Eric? My last one, Dan, and I, I think this is the one I'm most excited for. Um, from Quantic Dream is a PlayStation 4 exclusive called Detroit Become Human. Um, it's a really neat idea. It's got the the branching story paths that Quantic Dream is known for, and it's. It's about AI that is, um, you know, brought to life, so to speak, by humans. And they just kind of take over pretty much all tasks that humans are supposed to do, like gardening and and babysitting, teaching, just anything, really. Uh, But what sets them apart is they have this little circle on their temple. I think it's always on the right temple from what I've seen. Um, And usually it's blue, which means that they're behaving as they were programmed to do. Uh, but in the trailer that, that I rewatched tonight, um, it shows a story of an AI named Connor, who's basically uh, what would amount to like an FBI agent trying to talk somebody off the ledge who's also holding a young girl. Um, and you can see that that AI, ha- his circle is red, which I, I guess would mean that he's he's all fucked up. His wiring's done fucked up on him, and he's misbehaving. Mm, um, rogue. So- 
Yeah, basically. So they 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 show the different branching story paths that you can take uh, based on the different choices that you make when you're playing as Connor. Uh, and it just looks so neat. I think that there's a lot they could do with it. I, I don't know if they're going to try and do like one big story, if they're going to break it up into different set pieces, kind of like what Battlefield 1 did. Um, but I think there's there's a lot of cool things that they could do there. This all came from a, a short film, or not a short film, but a short that, that they produced in 2012 called uh, Kara. Did he, either of you remember that? Nope. No. It was like, from what I remember, it was these AI just kind of walking in a line. Um, but this Kara character, uh, by the end of it, you, you realize that she's kind of going to try to break free from from the reins of her AI-dom and become human. So I think it's, that's that's where it came from. I, I highly recommend taking a look at the trailer. I think it looks really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, this that game looks awesome to me. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I, I thought was interesting was the kind of the moral dilemmas that, yeah. that, you're, that you're presented with when you're ma- making your choices. They all see none of them seem like uh, an easy choice or a black and white choice. It's all yeah, seems and, to be shades and, of gray. And then, like Eric said, it kind of branches based on what you're doing. And, you know, you're trying to talk this robot <laughs> off the ledge and save save this human child. And it seems like it can go a lot of different ways depending on, you know, your your actions. Even just watching the uh, the trailer for it, like, you kind of wonder to yourself, does this, does this robot, is the robot feeling anything? Like when right. he's trying to talk this guy off the ledge? And you just look at him and you wonder, like, if he picks the wrong thing and the, the girl ends up dying, does that then fuck him up enough to where his circle turns red and he just kind of goes rogue? Like, how do the things that you do affect the character that you're playing? Yeah. I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah. It's very Especially cool. after I, watching I, Westworld. Yeah. I was very interested in that. Yeah. That and game. Quantic Dream made one of my favorite games ever in Heavy sure. Rain. So. Very much looking forward to that game. I really hope it comes out this fall. Sounds good. So that's everything, right? Yeah, you want to just run through some of the games we didn't talk about? Yeah, yeah. Um, So obviously not a ton of interest from us. Either that or this game's probably not going to come out this year. Prey? Anybody? No. It's too soon. I'm kind of interested in it, but I don't know anything about it. Rising, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. I know nil. No. Friday the 13th, the game? No. Nope. Mm. Strafe? No. Nope. Dusk? Nope. Desync? <laughs> nope. I have no idea what that is. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy? I have a little interest in that just because I've never played a Crash Bandicoot game. Yeah. It's been a while. I'm mildly interested. And they did such a nice job with Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. I know it's not the same thing, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, Agents of Mayhem. No. What, I don't do know, I know what a that? lot of these games are. What do I know that I I've heard that? Yeah, somewhere. I think that's a I think that's a PC thing. Uh, there's actually a good amount of info on on Agents of Mayhem. I just didn't know much about it. Uh, a brand new IP from Saints Row developer Volition Studios. Oh, that's right. That's why. That's that's what that's what I know it from. Okay. Quake Champions. Oh, Agents of Mayhem! Back to Agents of Mayhem. That's the one with the actual characters that you pick a party and you go and complete tasks mm. with a couple couple different people. I think more yeah. character more character based than yep. than Saints Row was. That's Correct. Cool. Uh, Quake Champions. We got a good dose of that from E3, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it actually looked pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Tokyo Forty Two. Don't know. Yeah, another Spider-Man game. Who cares? Battle- Spider- no, 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 no. Did you watch any of that? Yeah, that's a PS4 exclusive made by the same people that made. Um, I think it's made by the same people that made Sunset Overdrive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks really fucking good. And had I had I noticed it on here, I probably would have done that. I, I think you're doing a large disservice to that game by just glossing it over. It. It looks really good. I don't know who, who's making it, Dan. Insomniac? Oh, yeah, uh, developed by Insomniac Games. It is Insomniac, and I mean, it just looks fantastic. I'm That's a day one purchase for me, for sure. 
I just can't. I can't do the comic book stuff. I'm just. I hear you. I hear you. But I, so like I said, it. it looks really good and like really well done. I, I just think that that's the only. The only uh, like comic book movies and stuff I'm interested in are the ones I've never heard of before. And I have and to, be, I, I get I have to be told it's like, oh, this that's a Marvel property. But have you played like Spider-Man games? How many have we played? I played that really good one. What was that PS2? That one that was really good, where you it was like when you were stringing through the skyscrapers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't think Spider-Man's been overdone. <clears throat> Shitty Spider-Man's been overdone, probably. I don't know. It's just Tobey Maguire. Insomniac is really good too. Tobey I mean, Maguire they're so good. Shampoo my dingus. I know. I, I, I'm not saying it's not going to be good. I just have zero interest in anything comic book related at this point. All right. Well, I'm going to back that one. Um. Where we were, Battlefront Two. That's probably not coming out this year, right? I bet you it does. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me. They're gonna start rotating Battlefield and Battlefront. I bet you. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think you're right because it's dice. Hopefully, that's better. It's got to be. I mean, the thing is, is it wasn't bad for what it was, but yeah. what it was was really bare bones. Yeah, it was a very, very shallow game. Yeah. But like the sound quality and all that shit was was really good. It's gorgeous too. Graphically, yeah. it looked amazing. So it's a good, good springboard. Uh, Last of Us Part Two, no, not coming out this year for sure. Destiny Two, oh, definitely interested. Think that's coming out this year? Yeah, I do. I think it will come out this year. State of the Cape. In- Sorry, Dean. I- I'm interested because it's going to be on PC. I'd play the first one again if it came out on PC. But. Yeah. Uh, are people still playing the first Destiny? Is that still big? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think people sure. still do play it. They just, I think, uh, fairly recently put another expansion out. Hmm. Uh, State of Decay 2. I didn't play the first one. I thought the first one was terrible. I know I'm in the minority there, but I thought it was awful. Didn't Will like that one? I don't know. Did he play that? I don't know. Uh, Assassin's Creed Empire is the alleged name of the next Assassin's Creed game. That's not coming out this year. No. I think they pretty much said as much. Yeah. Far Cry Five. I'm um, I'm a little I, tired of Far I'm, Cry. I'm I agree. I'm also tired of Far Cry. Unless they have a really 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 interesting setting. I think I be, would probably opt really for uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands to to scratch that itch. Just because I think the setting looks really cool. Absolver? No, yes. Nothing. Don't I got know. nothing. Don't know. Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy. We made our thoughts no. known about that no. last week. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Nope. No. How about Loot Rascals, guys? <laughs> Loot Rascals? Hell yeah. I don't know how we missed that one. Rain World. Uh-uh. Nothing. God of War. Yes, that's not going to come out this year, though. Looked good. Actually... You know what? It may. They said they're able to play through it uh, beginning to end at this point. I don't know how much work more, you know, time it takes to polish something like that, but yeah, that may be their big fall exclusive. It looked fantastic. It did look good. I was even interested. Squad, nothing. Insurgency Sandstorm, nothing. No. I guess the only reason I'm saying these is so that we can say we covered them. Yeah. <laughs> Overkills The Walking Dead. I mean, that's going to be really cool, cool and interesting. John Wick Chronicles. I, I liked the John Wick movie. Did you guys see the John Wick movie? No, I, I want not. to, though. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, it was, it was pretty pretty cool. Uh, is that Keanu Reeves? It is. All right. In, in a rare, uh, decent performance. Good but showing from the, Keanu. The thing about the performance is that it demanded nothing of him, so that's why I think he was all right <laughs> at it. How dare you, Corey? He's a terrible actor. I don't. And, and there's now there's that hipster movement saying the the other side, like, no, he's just yeah. so nuanced, you don't get it. And it's like, well, all right. Whatever. Are they being serious though? Yeah. There's always that that like there's a strong reaction towards something, and then there's that like hip cool crowd that you know, it's the, it's the same with everything. Yeah. Yeah. We predicted it for Pokemon Go. Dawn of War three. I'm interested in Dawn of War three. 
I uh, I re- I play I played the first Warhammer Dawn of War. I have the second one. I think I think I got that as part of a humble bundle. You do have the second one because I believe I downloaded it from you. Oh, okay. What is Dawn um, of War? I don't, can't even it's a strategy. It. strategy. RTS. Yeah. Set in the Warhammer oh, right. Warhammer 40k. Universe. It looks really cool. Yeah. Speaking of that, Dan, I have that Vermintide game if you want it. It's like a horde mode type of game. I, I'm interested, but would I want to just play it by myself? No. Yeah. I got it through the, the Humble Monthly, so if you want it, yeah. I don't, I'm probably not going to play it. We'll just add yeah. it to our giveaway list then. Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, neighbor. I, I don't know anything. Uh, Death Stranding is listed, but that's probably not coming out. Uh, not even a chance. I'd be shocked. Kingdom Hearts 3, I think it would be glorious if that came out this year, but I it's don't not. know. It's not gonna come out this year. Still, no. It's been a while. Haven't they been? Haven't put been, money on it. Haven't they been dangling that for like two years now? Well, well how long did Final Fantasy 15 take? A decade. But the, like Kingdom Hearts three, like that's the kind of game that information would have leaked out about, and I don't think there's anything out there. Not no. really. That's why I didn't bother touching it because I know it's not. Yeah. It's um, not coming out. Star Citizen. That's Man. not coming out either. That may never come out. <laughs> yeah. 160 million in crowdfunding and not coming out. Tekken 7. I'm interested. I probably will end up not biting, but I'm in- it depends when it comes out. Yeah. If it comes out in the summer, I might get it. If it comes out in the fall, I probably won't. Mm-hmm. Pano pick. What? You know, just back to Tekken 7 for a second. The mere fact that I'm even thinking about getting that game tells you how much of a good time I had with Tekken Tag Tournament. Back in the day, yeah. Like 15 because years I, ago. <laughs> I have no business buying that game. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. any fighting game, really. Yeah, I, any fighting I, game. Yeah. I like that they went to the free-to-play model. I think that's the way to go for most of those. With anyway. uh, Killer Instinct. Yeah, Killer Instinct. I think. Although I will say I had a good time with Metal, uh, Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hatsune Miko. Oh, uh, the rest of these games have release dates, so they're probably going to come out this year. But then again, you never know for sure. Uh, Hatsune Miko, Project Diva, Future Tone for PS4 is coming out. Oh, it came out two days ago. Never mind. (laughs) Rise and Shine for Xbox One and PC comes out tomorrow. I don't know anything about Rise and Shine. Anybody? Does anybody else? Oh, it's a J. Cole song, too, so I'm not going to find anything on YouTube. (laughs) Uh, Road Redemption, PS4 and Xbox One, January 15th. Anybody? Nothing, right? No. I don't know. I hesitate to say it's telling if we know nothing about these games. Because you never know. Some of these could be gems that... You know, a lot of games that came out last year we knew nothing about before they came out. Rise and Shine is a cool art style. I'll give it that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not uh, not dismissing these games by by glossing over them. But... No, a lot of them are like if if they end up being a good indie, like games media will write about it and right. then we'll we'll play it. Yes, you know? exactly. Uh, 2064 read only memories for PS4 comes out January 17th. No, that sounds familiar to me. Is that part of a series? No idea. It does sound familiar on... though. I wonder if it's on PC and we've heard about it, it from could be, other like, podcasts. It's now it's a PS4 release or something. Yeah. Uh, the Flame and the Flood is coming out for PS4 for Jan- also January 17th. I did play that. I talked a little bit, bit about it. I think it made one of my Thummies category lists. I think I talked about it during Thummies. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Gravity Rush 2, Eric talked about. Uh, Urban Empire for PC, January 20th. 20th. It's a sim. Uh, mm-hmm. City building sim. Yeah, you play the mayor, right? Yep. Which um, so uh, you... maybe you'll do have the Stardew Stardew Valley effect in that SimCity has been so terrible that a halfway decent. Well, look at City Skylines. People love that yeah. game, and I think yeah. a lot of that has to be awesome. with, with how bad the newest SimCity was. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dragon Quest VIII: Journey of the Cursed King for 3DS, also January 20th. That's is that a? Does anybody know, Dan? Is that a re-release? Who knows? No I, already, idea. I couldn't tell you what Dragon Quest they're on. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Battle PS4, Xbox One, PC, January 20th. 
Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue for PS4 January 24th. Who even knows? We talked about that in the that chat. Is. Like, who knows what yeah. what that is? I I don't know. Kingdom Hearts fans Unless... know, and and God bless you because I wouldn't even know where to start. Yeah. Um, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard for PS4, Xbox One, and PC January 24th. That was the one that we saw last year, right? And yep. it, I thought it looked cool, but people said it was terrible. I don't know. I'm interested in it only because it's returning. Supposedly, that was one of the games I was going to cover. Mm-hmm. It's supposed, supposed to be returning to the survival horror roots, more like the old Resident Evil games instead of the heavy action route like they have been. Okay. So I'm interested, but I'm going to wait for reviews on that one before I buy it. Okay. Uh, Yakuza 0 for PS4, January 24th. I, I'm not sure what that is. It's an uh, entry in the Yakuza. Is it a Yakuza prequel, maybe? Yeah, I had one of the Yakuza games way back in the day. Double Dragon 4 for PS4 and PC coming out January 29th. Gosh, I don't even remember what Double Dragon is. Side-scrolling brawler. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. I do remember now. Yeah, okay. Uh, Disgaea 2 for PC. I think that's a re-release. Comes out January... It's definitely a a re-release. Comes out January 30th. Constructor HD. No idea. PS4, Xbox One, PC, January 31st. Uh, Eric talked about Hit Hitman. Digimon World Next Order, PS4, January 31st. Just stop me if, if you guys have anything to add on any of these. Poochie and, Yoshi's, Poochie and Yoshi's Wooly World 3DS, February 3rd. Um, that's a sequel, right? To Yoshi's Wooly World? Is it a sequel or, or is it the game ported to 3DS? You're right. Yeah, I remember reading about it. It's ported with extra Poochie content. Poochie. Tuho Genso Wanderer, PS4 and Vita, February 7th. Uh, eight Liar, Eight Liar, at, Atelier, Atelier, Eight li, ad, Adelier, Sophie, the Alchemist of the Mysterious Book for PC. We cover one of those every single year. <laughs> February 7th. Who knows what it is? One of these one of these days I'm going to play one. The Atelier Chronicles are like RPGs. They're JRPGs. I should play one. Yeah. Uh, Sniper Elite 4, I know people are excited for Sniper Elite 4, PS4, Xbox One, PC, February 14th. Deformers for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, February 14th as well. Ease Origin for PS4 and Vita, uh, February 21st. That's a re-release of an old game. I think I have it on PC. Uh, Torment, Tides of Numenera for PS4, Xbox One, PC, February 28th. Is that, that to me sounds like a... Uh, 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 computer RPG, CRPG. Yeah, it's not. It's, that's an old one. That's re-released, right? It must be. Yeah. Torment. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, birthdays, the beginning. PS4 and PC, March seventh. I feel like I read stuff about that, that. Sounds interesting. It's it's today's version of Spore, but like in a more Minecrafty type of world. Gotcha. That's what I gathered from when I was There's reading about it. There's dinosaurs in it. Yeah. It looks uh-huh. interesting bizarre it's very childlike yeah dang and rampa one and two reload for ps4 march 14th that's just a fun word to say dang i'm slightly rampa. interested i'm playing dang and rampa yeah uh somebody i listen to frequently is a huge fan mm. didn't I, uh, you play one of the dang and rampas cory yeah i played the first one do you okay. like it it was all right it was interesting. It's definitely different than anything I've ever played before. It's like a visual novel with a lot of interactivity. Okay. Um, you're solving a mystery. You're like in a, a high school that goes on lockdown and people die and you have to figure out who did it. And there's like a whole like uh, court system where you're debating people and it's just really That sounds strange. really cool to me. It does and it's fun for a while. Uh, but it, it comes down to like how much reading do you want to do to get the most out of it? Usually not very much. <laughs> yeah, and that's where I fall with those kind of games. Like, I like them, I enjoy them, but it, like when I sit down to play a video game, I don't want to do a ton of reading. I don't mind reading, but I don't know. I'd rather just read a book if I'm going to be reading. Yeah. Uh, Sticks, Shards of Darkness, PS4, Xbox One, PC, March 14th. Dreamfall Chapters, PS4, Xbox One, March 24th. Uh, a couple more Kingdom Hearts games that nobody can decipher. MLB The Show 17 for PS4, March 28th. 
Is it a MLB The Show year, Eric? Do you usually get those? No, I bought it last year. Oh, okay. So what, do you skip a few years and... Take a year off. Yeah. It's really good. I I played... Uh, the best time I had with it last year was when my friend Jeff came to visit, and we played each other. It was, it was really fucking cool. Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 for PS4, Xbox One, PC comes out April 4th. Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, PS4, Xbox One, PC, April 7th. The Silver Case, PS4, April 18th. Dragon Quest Heroes 2, PS4, April 25th. Injustice 2, PS4, Xbox One, iOS, Android, May 16th. And that's it, according to Game Informer's master list of games with release dates. Mm-hmm. Cool. Sounds good. Injustice Thoughts? 2 is a maybe. What's that, Eric? Injustice 2 is a maybe. Man, that's a pretty big release. I liked the first one a lot. They got a lot of lesser known characters in the in this one too. At least lesser known to me. So yeah. like you, Corey, I find that a little more interesting. Yeah, like when I saw the trailer for Doctor Strange, I'm like, oh, this looks cool. Yeah. And then I realized it was a, another comic book property. That's how I felt about is it Luke Cage? Yeah. Yeah. I knew nothing about that going into it. Yeah. Which I liked. Okay. Nibble bits? Let's do it. I don't have any, Dan. I forgot. I forgot okay. how to do this podcast. That's all right. All right. I, I have one. Corey, what do you got for Nibble Bits? Uh, Shovel Knight is coming to the Nintendo Switch. It will also have new game modes and a uh, new price, which has not been listed yet, but they did say that. Uh, it's going to be called Treasure Trove. But if you own the previous version, you will be upgraded to the new version free of charge. And that will include the Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment content. So I guess if if you own uh, the the current Shovel Knight, you're in you're in a pretty good position. Um, I have it on 3DS. Does that mean now I'll get it on Switch? That's what it sounds like to me. No, no, you'll get the the Treasure Trove version, the free upgrade to the Treasure Trove version, which includes the content. Right on the Switch. Oh, no. okay. I see what you're saying. Just the yes. new version. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't remember where I played that game. What platform I played it on? PC, I think. Yeah, Wasn't remember? Because you beat it with mouse and keyboard. No, no that, that was Rogue was Legacy. Rogue Legacy. Oh, yeah. I always confuse those. Yeah. I don't know. What the hell did I play it on? I don't remember. Um, the new modes included are a... I wouldn't call this a mode, but a body gender swap if you want to play as a lady female. Uh, lady, yeah, lady female. A lady <laughs> shovel knight. You can do that. Um, but also co-op for all platforms, which I didn't know this. That was uh, just a Wii U exclusive, was co-op. So it's coming to all platforms. Uh, Sunless Sea is coming to iPad this spring. It's being ported by Blitworks, who did the mobile versions of Invisible Ink, Don't Starve, Broken Age, and Bastion, uh, among others. Will require iOS 8+, Plus, iPad Pro, iPad Air, iPad Air 2, or better. So... Dan, good opportunity for you to play some Sunless Sea is to get it on the iPad. Uh, our iPad has zero room on it. It's the kid's iPad. Delete some of the damn kid's games. It, it's got 12 gigabytes, and like 3 gigabytes of that is system memory. Mm. There's no room. That sucks. Yeah, I don't care. I'd rather play it on computer anyway. Yeah, yeah. when you can really sink some time into it. Sure. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda will not have a season pass, but they did, uh, or they did not confirm how DLC would be distributed. Only Aaron Flynn only said uh, more to come on that. So I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know. There's going to be some sort of multiplayer component. What if they just say like, okay, we're gonna, you got to buy the game, and you're buying all the DLC all at once, and it's going to cost you 80 bucks. Would people go for that? They'd bitch, but they'd go for it. I think they yeah, would, too. I, I don't, think you're I don't, right. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but... I was just kind of going with some... Uh, thinking outside of the box there. Like, what is their plan for DLC? Maybe they're just not going to have it. Oh, they're going to have it. Yeah. Maybe, or maybe a lot of money it, on the table there. Maybe it's not DLC, but maybe they're going to do expansions... Yeah, maybe maybe Bottom their up. DLC strategy is maybe the whole uh, idea of DLC is done away with with however they're structuring 
this next trilogy of games, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's episodic or something like that. I don't know. Uh, my last we'll, one. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. It's uh, it's nigh time. What are three months or two months till release, right? Yeah, two months ish. Conan's Clueless Gamer segment might get its own TV show. Uh, Hollywood Reporter reported it's being developed into a series by TBS. Um, they are producing it, but that still doesn't necessarily mean it will see the light of day. A lot of times for these shows, they shoot a pilot, and then uh, the producers will decide, based on the pilot, whether they actually want to air it. Uh, and, and I guess they that segment was so successful that they decided to do this. But... I feel like it would live better as like a web series yes. than yeah, an actual yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, sure. I'm with you. And part of the problem, uh, so Conan's going to executive produce it, which essentially means he's going to pay for it, but he's not going to host it. You can forget it then. Right. He's not going to be on it? No. Then why bother? Well, yeah. Part of the hook was hit him playing exactly. games. Like I would hate for them to get like a Trevor, Trevor Noah or something, like a young comedian to do it. That would just be stupid. Like Part of the appeal is that it's Conan, like goofy Irish yeah. Conan, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The red hair is a big part of the appeal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe they'll take it in a slightly different direction. That'll work. But from what it sounds to me, I, I'm not, not interested. It's a small doses thing. That's what makes it so special. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And that's okay. it for my bits. Who tweeted the one about Scalebound? We should probably talk about that. Wasn't I me. did. I lied. Oh, that was your nibble bit then, Eric. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Xbox One exclusive Scalebound has been canceled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I haven't really looked too much more into it other than that. So if you yeah. guys have any more information, feel free to add. Nope. I have a little bit. It was uh, apparently the development's been troubled. That we haven't heard anything about it in quite some time. Yeah. Um, we saw. And yeah, they, the they just footage? gave it back. This year? Yeah. Yeah. Last year. That's that's a while away a ways away though for yeah I guess it is for 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 like a big AAA exclusive you know yeah good point half a year yeah it seemed like they uh, were pretty far along though I, I don't know or maybe it was one of those I things was, where what they had they were far along in what they had but what they had wasn't good wasn't good yeah that's possible it, did, it didn't look very good to me I was moderately interested only because it was Platinum Games and I right. really like their games. But that was it. That was where the the interest ended. Um, it didn't look super interesting, but you ne- like like you never know what they're gonna come up with. So I was uh, going into it with an open mind, but you know, done for now. So what can you do? There was a lot of people that liked the the director for the game and were interested in in it solely because of him, because he had done the Bayonetta games and Wonderful One Hundred One. Uh, games that I also really, really like. So they were kind of sad, but from for the most part, people didn't really seem that upset about it. That'd be, that'd be uh, as the director, that would probably be pretty sucky. Yeah. You know, to spend how many years of your life on a game and then have the publisher say, mm. I mean, I know it happens all the time, Good. but that would, that would yeah. suck. Definitely. Okay. Um, that's it, right, Eric? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have one nibble bit. So I don't know if you remember last week when I talked about NVIDIA or not NVIDIA, Razer's three screen laptop. Yeah. We talked Mm -hmm. about that last week. Yeah. Apparently two of them were stolen from the show floor at CES this past weekend. And Razer is offering up $25,000 rewards for information on who stole two. I don't know. It was two or three or two or four. Uh, of their th- of their three screen laptops, that sounds like a heist to me. Like I don't know how you s- manage to steal something like that. You know, I don't feel like that's easy easy thing to do unless it was someone that kind of works for the for them or behind the scenes. You know, the old inside oh, job. Inside job, yeah, it's very inside nice. job. I like it. Then, you know, you put it up on eBay. Well, no, then you get caught. Yeah. But. No, you sell the secrets. I don't know if there's too many secrets. Yeah, maybe. I thought it was just kind of like a gimmick anyway. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess you would have to see one to yeah to truly experience what a three-screen laptop is like. I thought it was just one of those things like, hey, look what we can do. Yeah, sure. Hmm. 
you know, I can imagine a few years from now it'll be obsolete anyway, so what's the point? Anyway, how was your week, Corey? I've had a bit of a nutty week. I had an uh, uh, anniversary with the girlfriend this week, and our Congrats. dog... Thanks. Our dog was getting surgery on Monday. Our anniversary was Tuesday. So we decided to go to dinner. We planned to go to dinner uh, Saturday. But Friday night, I ate some chicken fries and then a bunch of junk food. And Saturday felt god-awful, real sick. I puked, which I haven't done uh, without alcohol being involved in a very, very long time. Uh, And I think it was the Aldi chicken fries because the last, the two times before that I had eaten them, they made me sick. Um, but I wanted to get better for our planned dinner Saturday. We went to the steakhouse in the casino. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to get better because our backup plan was to go on Sunday. But Sunday, I really wanted to watch the, Gi- <laughs> the Giants, which is a little mm-hmm. selfish of me. But I pulled myself together. I uh, started feeling a little bit better when we were on our way. And once we sat down and, and I had a cocktail and then started to feel better. And then uh, we got our, our steaks in probably about halfway through eating our steaks, I just got real sick again and was holding myself together. I think I did a pretty good job, but I could, I think I had two bites of my steak. Uh, couldn't eat any of my sides. Couldn't eat dessert. Couldn't finish my old fashioned that I had ordered. Oh um, no. No. Yeah. It was, it was bad. And, uh, that was our anniversary dinner. But, uh, my dog had the surgery on Monday to fix her vulva. Because she was born, she was born with a hooded vulva, and she had already gotten, Whoa. she had already gotten two UTIs in the the year that we had her. And for a vet visit for a UTI, it's like eighty bucks, including medication. So they gave us the option to surgically fix it with a cosmetic surgery, uh, a vagina lift, as we've been calling it. Um, <laughs> so we took it and uh, mm-hmm. picked her up that Monday and she was a awful mess when they brought her out she was bleeding all over the place she was scooting her butt on the floor smearing blood all over the vet Uh, it was just disgusting and I don't do well with blood no Um, me either even my own I just don't like I don't like dealing with it I don't like seeing it I don't like repairing I don't know I just can't I can't do it Uh, and her like her whole butt is totally shaved you can see where they lifted up her vagina and like stitched all around between her vagina and her butthole oh my Uh, god just her grundle her grundle yeah (laughs) just awful and i felt so bad for her because like how do you explain to a dog like this is for your own good you know i i can relate here Corey, because uh when we had my dog's nuts chopped off it's so funny when they show like personality yeah because we brought him home (laughs) and it wasn't quite what you're describing but we brought him home and he he Usually we bring him inside and he like darts up the stairs. Well, he, he sat down on the stairs and looked at me like, how the fuck could you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you guys a picture. I took a picture of it because he just looks so sad and in despair. Yep. I was, uh-huh. I felt terrible. Oh yeah. It's like, what do you do? Like, Ugh. it's okay. It's okay, little buddy. You're all right. Uh, I felt so bad. Based on what Fiona was doing, we think she thought she did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because she was very obedient. Well, she did, Corey. She put a hood on her vulva. Yeah, she she gone and uh, got born wrong. Yeah. But, uh... So she has to wear the cone of shame for 10 to 14 days. We already scheduled to get her stitches out, which is going to be Thursday. But just be watched at all times. So we've gotten very little sleep because she sleeps with the cone on in a chair next to our bed on my girlfriend's side. Uh, but every half an hour, tries to get up on the bed. So we both wake up. Uh, and then she, you know, my girlfriend will let her on the bed. And then she, half an hour later, she'll decide to get off the bed. So for the last three nights, I've gotten just shit sleep. So I can re- somewhat, somewhat relate Dan to uh, lack of sleep. It makes me never want to have children, sure. really. <laughs> I got I if this again can relate. <laughs> the first night that that we brought Cooper home, he had the cone on, mm-hmm. and he tried to lay on the bed. Like he he doesn't ordinarily sleep on the bed. He usually sleeps under it, but he couldn't get under there because of the cone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he tried to sleep on the bed. I think because he was so like depressed and sad, he just was uh, wanted to be near us, and it was 
miserable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it sucks, man. And in the whole first day, she did not go to the bathroom. She would not pee. She would not poop. So we took her out like 10 different times. And of course, we have to carry her up and down the stairs because she's not allowed to jump or do stairs or oh. do anything active. Uh, it's It's been a handful. You can probably see she's behind me right now sleeping. We've got oh. her, her gentle leader on. For whatever reason, when that's on her, she's like docile. Mm -hmm. So we just keep it on Poor her. Thing. We took the cone off because she hasn't really tried to bite her stitches uh, we recent, did the same recently, so she's being good. It's just, it's a lot, and it sucks. Um, it's hard for the dogs to do anything with the cone on, you know. Yeah. Like it's, our our dog, we have, we have a corgi who was low to the ground, and when he got fixed, like it would drag on the ground when he when he would go outside, you yep. know, to to pee or whatever. It's like poor, you know, poor yeah, guy. She, she so would, yeah, we didn't keep it on that long either. We took her out in the snow, and she was like scooping up snow with the cone and like getting yeah. it caught in there. And, oh God, how you, embarrassing for you her! You poor girl. But because we confined her to her bed for so long, uh, my girlfriend more so than me, I kind of let her, you know, wander a little bit. But because we confined her to her bed so long and like carried her everywhere and did all that stuff, she's afraid to walk on our floor now because she thinks. She, she's not supposed to but that's not really the case again like how do you communicate these things to dogs you know she's terrified of getting in trouble for, for walking art. you know so i don't know it's been bizarre but tuesday uh was our actual anniversary and we made california rolls sushi nice uh for the very first time we want to do something a little different and uh that's the only kind of sushi i like is the california roll probably because it's not really sushi really how much have you had a lot like different kind oh really yeah. that's the only one you like yep i'm not i don't know i'm not a raw fish guy i'm um, not either but i've actually had quite a few that i really liked yeah i don't know i like when i working in uh in in the city there that was a, a go-to a lot of times was sushi and i'd uh -huh. always force myself to get it and i don't know i just never other than the california roll which is simple it's, it's cucumbers avocado and uh crab meat which is, I don't know, I like it. But mostly I think I just like wasabi. So uh, yeah, I, usually, I usually go for uh, soy sauce and a little ginger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we, got the, we got the pickled ginger, which I also, and soy sauce. Um, we did the whole thing, and it was fun to make. It took us, like, three hours. We also made miso soup, uh, homemade, which was, which was good. But we tried the Hannaford to go, which is the grocery uh, thing where you just put everything you want online and then show up and they hand it to you. Because I don't like shopping for international stuff because sometimes you don't know where to look and I don't know. It was actually really easy. We just put all the stuff we needed on, on the list and went and picked it up. So that was a new experience. Uh, but that's been it. That's It's just been dealing with dog shit and trying to enjoy an anniversary. How was the extra charge on that grocery? It's only $5, but the first time they waive it and they gave us, wow, a, that's not bad at all. They gave us a free box of oatmeal. Damn. No, I mean you could you, it's, if you get two hundred dollars worth of groceries, it's only five bucks, you know, to pick it up. I imagine like for like mothers with children or fathers, yeah. Dan, in your case, if you had to get something like that's probably super handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because I, you know, twins and then my daughter. I can't ca yeah. I can't have twins and and my daughter in a shopping cart. Right. Plus, sometimes shopping that. just sucks. I wish Aldi had that. I actually love grocery shopping. Oh, I hate but it. I'm weird. I hate it. It's don't get me wrong. It's nice when there's nobody else in the store. I enjoy it. Yeah, though. yeah. I'm with. Yeah, you. I'm not gonna say that doesn't piss me off, but <laughs> I just love food. Yeah. You know. Food's delightful. Okay. Anything else, Corey? Nah. All right. What do you got, Eric? Oh, went went to New York uh, for a week. I think we, we headed out on the 5th, uh, bright and early in the morning. We left at like, ugh, had to have been 4 o'clock, 4 or 5. Um, but because I'm old and sleepy, I conned my wife into driving the whole way up, which was awesome. Uh, we stopped when we got there and got some of our favorite Thai food from Endicott. It wasn't as good as I remembered it. Moonstar? Mm -hmm. No, uh, Thai basil. Thai basil. Yeah. Uh, and then we went out to dinner that night for, with Tyler, former intern, because it was his birthday. Oh. Uh, so we went out to dinner. Oh, I did play something else. Uh, I guess I'll talk about it now. Um, 
So anyway, after dinner, Tyler asked us if we want to come back to his parents' house. So we did. They've got a really cool basement uh, with like a kind of video game set up because his younger brother plays video games a lot. Um, so we ended up playing. Have any of you tried the Jackbox Party Packs? I've heard of it. I actually own two of them just because they look so cool and they were on sale. And I was like, if one day I happen to have a group of people together, I would like to play this. Uh, so we played it, and it was really fun. Uh, you use your phone as the like remote or control, and basically it connects via Wi-Fi, and it gives you. You go to a website, you put in the code that it tells you to put in, and it connects all of you to a game, and it just does like multiple choice. Or we had one where you had to draw things on your phone. Uh, I really, really thought it was cool. Uh, so that was the first night. Uh, then we went up to my in-laws for the rest of the week um, because my sister-in-law had a baby boy just before Christmas. Um, yeah, and really, I mean, it was uneventful. We just kind of hung out for the rest of the week. I did change my first diaper because circumstances happened that led me to be the one that was alone with the baby for a while, and I had to babysit, <laughs> uh, which was fine. I mean, I didn't really want to change a diaper, but I didn't have a choice. A little shit diaper. And Ooh. that was fine. I always said I can change my own kids' diapers, but I will never change another child's I diaper if I don't told, have to. I had told them that, Dan, yeah. prior to this. I mean, <laughs> her dad what... got sick. He had to go to the hospital. Her mom had to do yeah. something else. Christy had to go with her dad. So I was like, sure. all right, like right, I'll babysit the child. Mm-hmm. And he shits all the time, so I knew that it was coming. But previous to that, I told them I wasn't doing it if it wasn't my own child. Yep. But... Whatever. I, I could maybe do like a nephew. Yeah. If need be, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was kind of my excitement uh, for my time away from Virginia. But I did miss a snowstorm down here. Nice. Oh really? Which was was clutch move. Yeah. And when I got back today, it was like in the sixties. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was even like it was like fifty three up here. Yeah. yeah. Perfect timing crazy. to be away from here, because um, people can't handle it. I guess like schools were closed for three days and they got like three inches. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that insane? I, I just, I can't even imagine. So lucky yeah. kids though. Oh my God. I know that would have been awesome. Even people at work were like, nobody goes to work. It's absurd, but that was pretty much it. That was my, my time in New York. Um, I did get my favorite pizza from near where my, my wife is from. Very good. Anilio's, if you're ever in the Corning area, highly recommended. Oh, and I finally found a good pizza place in Charlottesville. Oh, nice. It's actually a little outside of Charlottesville. So yesterday, what we... I don't know why I did this, but I stupidly made a appointment to meet with our realtor the same day that we got back. So we had to leave at like 6 in the morning to get back by 3 to meet with the realtor. Um, because there was a couple houses, well, there was a specific house we wanted to look at. Um, so we went and did that. The house was terrible, but then she showed us like three other houses, one of which I would have bought on the spot. I would have, I would have bought on the spot, but circumstances didn't allow for it. And I'm still a little bitter Mm -hmm. and upset about it because I loved it. But the one good thing that came out of that trip was we found a great pizza place about 20 minutes from where we live. Nice. Uh, it's called Crozet Pizza, and we got the the Freedom Pie, which Ooh. was mozzarella, Romano, ricotta with, like, fresh chopped garlic. You can tell it's, like, real chopped garlic because it was super garlicky smelling and flavor. And I got Italian sausage on my half, and it oh, was man. absolutely delightful. That sounds good. So, finally got a good pizza place. So Nice. At least we got that. Yeah. Was it the type of situation, I, I think I talked to you about this, Eric, but where the pictures look really nice and then you get to the house and it's just a shithole? Uh, maybe not to the extent that you experienced. Okay. I knew I wasn't going to like it as much as my wife did. Okay. She's a little more open to doing work and yeah. updating than I am, even though neither yep. of us know a goddamn thing about it. Sure. Um, the only thing that really appealed to me in the pictures was the back uh, deck. Uh-huh. It was a two two level deck. It was really oh, nice. cool. And after seeing everything, that was still the only thing that even remotely appealed to me. Yeah. It just certainly didn't look as nice as it did as it did in the uh 
the pictures. Yeah, they but, they they do a good job of framing framing the, the house told in, a, us in, that. A, in a good in a good light. Because when when you see it online, it looks blue, mm-hmm. the, like siding or whatever. We pulled up, it was like this is green, like a very kind of ugly, oh, older green. looking green, and. My wife was like, boy, this really looks a lot different in the picture. And the realtor goes, yeah, we're pretty good at that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we we felt when, when we were buying this house, we fell for that one a lot. Yeah. Actually. And when we looked at the one in Syracuse that we, we liked, we also fell for, for fell for that again. But, hey, you know, it's hard for us to tell, you know. If oh, for sure. Look, we only have that to go by. So. So I don't know. I'm uh, just feeling very discouraged about the house thing because I would have loved to have bought that one. But. Was there an offer on it already? Yeah. Actually, she texted me last night and told me that somebody was putting an offer on it. Uh. Um, But regardless, like, my mom has to move in with us at some point, and it just, it was funny. The realtor's actually really funny. She, there's no basement, which what we're looking for is something with a basement that my mom can kind of have as her own apartment. Yeah. And there's no basement, but the house is just, like, pristine. They literally updated everything. It, It just looks brand new. Well, they've house? lived there forever. Oh, okay. Um, they're just moving to Arkansas, but they wanted to update everything, I guess, and get top dollar, which for the area that we were, it's in, it's like I said, it's like 20 minutes outside of Charlottesville. So if you go that far out from Charlottesville, prices of the houses drop like a hundred grand. Wow. So it was at the bottom of our budget and it was beautiful, Yeah. but there was the only thing we really could have done was there's a loft above above the master but it was open so it looks over the master yeah. so the realtor was like well <laughs> you could put a wall up here but you'd really need to insulate it <laughs> yep. soundproofing i was like yeah i don't think that's gonna work out so yeah moving along okay anything else eric no sir okay uh i got a couple quick things so yeah last week i had reported on how I was taking the echinacea and the, what was the other thing? Olive Olive tree leaf. Yeah. Uh, And how well it was working. My wife had had strep throat last week and I was in the clear. Uh, Woke up Friday morning Uh, with a little bit of a twinge in my throat, which slowly progressed Mm. worse and worse and worse and worse and worse throughout the day. Uh, I am not a doctor guy. Last year when I went to the doctor, uh, for my, I ended up having an ear infection. That was the first time I'd been to the doctor in over 20 years, probably. Um, but my th- throat was starting to get bad enough where I'm like, I better just just suck it up, go to the doctor, and get it over with. So I went when my wife got home. I went to the walk-in. Luckily, there was no one in there. This time of year, those places are always freaking packed with coughing, bleeding people everywhere, you know? So luckily, there was not a soul in there. I got right in. Uh, sure enough, strep throat. And you know the throat swab that they do? Mm. Yeah. My throat at that point hurt so bad that the throat swab felt kind of nice. It like itched my, oh, itched yeah. my throat. It felt yeah, great. Yeah, like when you eat food, it feels fantastic for half a second, and then you want to kill yourself. Yeah, well, I couldn't get anything down my throat at Strep all. Strep throat was one of my least favorite things that yeah. ever happened to me. So, yeah, my I, I, I looked in my mouth. In my, in my throat just to see what was going on in there because you know like it's like i said it started to hurt i started to have trouble swallowing and it looked like fireworks in the back of my throat like it was all uh. multicolored and swollen and like uh so fr- you know friday night by the end of the night like i i couldn't i could barely drink water i couldn't swallow my saliva uh it was it was brutal um I couldn't could barely sleep every time i woke up to my mouth was like as dry as could be which made my mm-hmm. throat more swollen um, damn how long did it last in uh so it lasted about 36 hours so all, all day saturday i was down for the count again couldn't eat anything could barely drink anything my wife oh. went to wegman's to get me ice cream uh which was awesome because that was about the only thing i could kind of get down i had her get me mint chocolate chip good choice which I, I, no no not did a good it choice. burn no, I thought, you know, the, the mint will be nice and cool on my throat. Well, the chocolate chunks uh, kept getting they were stuck. Tearing you up. They kept getting stuck in various parts of my throat. And, you know, they would eventually, like, melt yeah. and, and, and go down with, like, some water. But it made it hard to even eat ice cream. She but it, it, it did help. Rainbow sorbet. 
I should have gone with like vanilla would would have been best, but I I didn't even think about the the little chocolate chunks. Uh, but yeah, all all day Saturday I was down for the count. I slept in and out most of the day, and uh, luckily Sunday when I woke up I was I was mostly good. I could finally eat something like probably afternoon on Sunday, um, and it was mostly gone by Sunday night. So, but I'm still on my antibiotic. Uh, I will take the full course of the antibiotic to make sure that shit does not come back because that was miserable. Somebody told me that you can't cure strep throat without an antibiotic. Uh, I've heard that too. That is not the case. I was going to say, because um, I've, that if that were the case, then I've never had strep throat in my life. Yeah. Which I find hard to believe. No, at most things like even ear infections and stuff, uh, sinus infections, they all go away on their own eventually. Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't like kind of care for strep throat, which I can't imagine how you couldn't, right. it can like it's turn crippling. into an infection elsewhere. Right. Um, but it's, yeah, somebody uh, told me it goes to your heart and you, it kills you, which I, I guess, like you said, is possible, but it, it can happen. Yeah. But no, it goes it, like anything else. It goes away on its own. I, I think I read like, uh, a week to 10 days it takes for yeah. strep throat to go away on its own, which is a long time. Cause I was in agony. I could never, I would never would have made it that long. Sore throats are the worst. I mean, you know, I didn't mind. It was funny, too, because I, I put, when I went into the walk-in, I put possibly strep throat on my thing, on my paper, you know, reason why you're there. And, they, you know, you can tell the the doctor was like, yeah, okay, strep throat, sure. I'm sure you just have a little minor sore throat. Uh, but after they did the test and everything, she's like, yep, sure enough, you have strep throat. Yeah, be like, yeah, I wouldn't. L- yeah, <laughs> listen, I wouldn't be here if I no. didn't need to be. Yeah. So, but like I said, luckily it only lasted about 36 hours is of agony. And then I was mostly good on Sunday. So <clears throat> don't miss that. And my, my twins have uh, RSV, which is also very fun. What's that What's that for? It's like a, it's like a lung infection that mm. babies get. So we have to do breathing treatments every four to six hours on them. So they don't get pneumonia. And, yeah, so they don't get pneumonia or it doesn't get, get worse. Um, so there's been a lot of illness floating around my house lately, and I don't like it. Dang. But nice. that, but that Corey, is why I wasn't able to do more for my notes. Fair enough. Between between the twins and, and myself and my wife being being ill. Mm-hmm. I also haven't gotten a lot of game time in, unfortunately, because of that. Other than Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's all I have for this week. Oh, the only other thing I wanted to talk about real quick was Taco Bell's new taco that's coming out in about two weeks. Yeah. Uh, we always like to keep people up on on food. So <laughs> I heard either yesterday or the day before that. I think it was yesterday. Taco Bell is coming out with a taco that uses a deep fried chicken patty as the shell. It's called the na- Naked Chicken Chalupa. Yeah. And it's that it's like a marinated chicken patty that's made into a taco shell. It's got lettuce, tomato, cheese, uh, and then like a I think it was an avocado ranch sauce, which I've had before and other things. And it's very good. Uh, So I'm really excited to try that when it finally comes out. That's going to be delicious. Yeah, I guess I guess it tested really well in the test markets. So they're they're bringing it bringing it national. Excellent. I think it's I think it's like two weeks. So, yeah, it's the end of the month. Yeah. Um, do we want to take a quick break? Or do we want to just keep rolling? It's up to you guys. I'm okay if you guys are. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Well, let's get into what we played. Um, do we want to talk about Galaxy Heroes first? Because now, now that Eric's Eric's playing too. Sure. I'm excited to hear Eric's thoughts. So, uh, yeah, Eric, you started playing when you, when you made your trek up to New York, right? I did, yes. Uh, I can't remember what prompted me to start. I don't remember, but any, anyway, I knew I was going to be without video games for for a week, and I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe this is a good time to start. So I did, um, and I was hooked from the second I started playing it. I I felt bad because I was on my phone a lot yeah. while I was up there. There's a lot you can do in that game. Mm-hmm. There, There's especially at do. the beginning, like, yeah. oh my god, I was I was on my phone a lot, and like, I started just waking up. <laughs> in the morning and before i even went out into the living room i would do my daily stuff so that i wasn't on my phone nice but i still found myself on my phone quite frequently 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just really addicting. It's just one of those games where you just want to keep getting to the next level or getting the new character, or, you know, doing this or doing that, upgrading your equipment, training your guys. There's just all these little things that add up to one really awesome mobile game. Yeah. It's just really fun. Uh, we started a guild. We need 30,000 raid tickets to do a raid. The, yeah, the first raid. I don't I don't know what we're at, actually, um, I right think now. we're at, like, 7,000, maybe. It just updated, I believe. Yeah, I actually, yesterday was the first day I, I didn't do all my dailies because, like, so when we got home, we went with the realtor, and then, like, I kind of passed out on the couch. I was actually, like, disappointed this morning when I realized I didn't do my dailies yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah. Motherfucker. You'll never get that back. <laughs> I will never get those 5,000 whatevers. Um, yeah, but I, I love it. It's just fantastic. There's like all these events going on all the time. There's Cantina battling. I haven't even opened up Galactic Battles yet. But There's I'm Galactic level... Battles, they're ships. Yeah. Did you, you, you didn't get to mods yet, right? No, I'm level 36. Okay. There's mods, yeah. It's it's pretty in depth. There's a lot to it, and and I I wish I could. I wonder if there's a way I can find out how many hours I spent on it, uh, and haven't spent a dime on it. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna look and see if if Google Play Games has keeps track of hours played. I spent two dollars on something. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm really enjoying my time with it. I, I did want to ask you guys, like, do you does everybody start with the same characters? Yeah, for the for the most part, like everybody has Chewbacca and the Jedi Consular. Okay. Uh, there's a couple other Luke Skywalker. Everyone gets really early. Okay. There's a few others. I got. Let's see. Who else? Jedi. Let's see. I got Greedo. I don't have Greedo. Plo Koon? I have Plo Koon. Jedi Knight Guardian? I do not have the Guardian. Talia? I have Talia. Uh, Royal Guard? Yep. Resi- Resistance Pilot, TIE Fighter Pilot, Ewok Scout, mm-hmm. Clone Sergeant, Snow Trooper, IG-86 Sentinel Droid. Yep. That's all I have. Yeah, I have a, a lot of the similar ones. I, um... I talked to a friend of the show, Chris, uh, quite a bit because he's, you know, all of his characters are maxed out and he has, like, the best possible party according to math or something stupid like that. I don't know. Which is mm-hmm. all Ewoks, I guess. Um, for advice. Because I was having a dull of a time getting through Count Dooku in the Cantina battles. Dan, mm-hmm. did you ever run up against that? I, no, I never had trouble with him. Why not? I don't know. He's wiping change, the floor with me. Change your party synergy. I need Stun to do, him. I need to do a lot of things. I don't know. It's just because every time you attack him, he counterattacks and he does a ton of yeah. damage. It's just you're probably just fair. not high enough level yet. Corey, get good. I gotta get, get good. good. But I Run did uh, this past week unlock Boba Fett, and he is mm-hmm. he's got to be the best Bo- character. Boba Fett's overpowered. He's OP. 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 I agree. Because once you kill him, he comes back once. Yeah, which is awesome. His and attack, then if he gets a kill. His, come back again. his uh, area of effect attack is insane. Mm-hmm. Does a lot of damage and it does uh, ability block. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of things going on. I'm Darth... just pardon me. I'm just doing a squad battle. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Darth Darth Vader's pretty good too. Uh, I'm working on Admiral Akbar and Akbar's good Ace to Windu. have. Akbar yeah, has Akbar's... Ak- Akbar's good ability is the one that dismisses all the negative status yep. effects on your party. Cleansing conditions. I've been using your Akbar, Dan. Oh, have you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, That that's... It. He's good to have if you're playing against Vader, because Vader puts a lot of conditions on people. Same with Boba Fett. So uh, Akbar, Akbar clears those off with... I don't know what the ability is called, but he's, he's really good for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you gotta kind of craft your party to who you're fighting against, Corey. I just recently started doing that because I was having no, I was starting to have no luck in the squad arena and stuff. And then I started like changing a, a, a character here and there. Yeah. Uh, just, just to give myself an advantage over who I was actually fighting against. I've been doing it's that. It's helped but a little like, bit. I don't know. Like I, my guys aren't high enough, like 
level to constantly mix and match like that, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I play a lot. Uh, <laughs> I play a lot. My player level is 58, and um, I have, like, five characters that are in the 50s, and a few that are in the 40s, and most of them are just level one. Oh, really? Yeah. You are pretty low. What am you I doing wrong? You, you don't play it as much as I do. Oh, that's yeah, what it that's is. True. I, I do my dailies every day, and that's it. Yeah. I've been keeping my people about same level. Mm-hmm. Like, all my characters are pretty much the same level as my player level. Yeah. That, that gets a lot harder once... Because yeah, I'll, sure like, I'll do my dailies now, and just with the training droids, I'll gain like one level on a character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the, once you get into the upper fifties. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. It sucks. But good stuff. Great, great mobile game. Oh, exactly what you want out of a mobile game, especially for Star Wars fans. Yeah, absolutely. Even casual Star Wars fans like myself, like yeah, sure. I still really enjoy the Star Wars aspect of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you play? You did you play anything else, Eric? No, just the Jackbox that I talked Jackbox. about. Okay. Uh, I'm still playing Soma. I had all intents uh, on beating Soma last night, Corey. I got to the bottom of the depths. So I had enough time to just walk around there last night. the The twins were a little fussy last night, so I didn't get to play video games last night. I like I said, I played Soma maybe about ten minutes last night. And, uh, hopefully, what well, I guess tomorrow night. I'll get a chance to beat it. But I'm still loving the hell out of Soma. Good call on that, Corey. It's a good game. It's Very too scary. Game. Yeah. It's more eerie. There, I mean, there's certainly some scary parts, but it's more... I can't deal with eerie either. <laughs> it's good. Uh, You're a big pussy like I am, Dan. <laughs> what do you got, Corey? I played a little Mobius Final Fantasy, which is a really strange game, but I I kind of like it quite a bit. Um, I I too was in bed all day Saturday, so uh, all I did was watch Netflix and, and play mobile games on my phone. Um, but like Mobius Final Fantasy scratches the Final Fantasy itch in the same way the the Star Wars uh, Galaxy of Heroes does for me, um, except for Final Fantasy, obviously. But uh, it's a lot going on in that game, just like Galaxy of Heroes. You have a character and you're uh, leveling him up by proceeding through battles. There is a story. Um, it's an, it's a weird Final Fantasy story, but same type of thing where there's a ton of events going on. Uh, special gear to unlock. Uh, I don't know. It's really not much to talk about with it, but if you're, if you're into Final Fantasy and you've got time to kill with a mobile device, I do recommend it. I tried playing it a while ago, and for whatever reason, it didn't... Oh, I know why I didn't. Because when you boot it up for the first time, there's like a 600 megabyte download. Which is always, you know... Most of the time when I boot these yeah. games up, I'm on the go, and you can't download yep. that without Wi-Fi. And I don't uh-huh. know, so I was just like, fuck this game, deleted it. But uh, I, I do recommend it. They had a, an event going on for New Year's where I got in just in time uh, to do the New Year's run where it's a series of battles, but the enemies don't attack back, and it's just based on uh, luck, uh, your reward. And I got some pretty good cards, which you use the cards. uh, It's like it's kind of like Pokemon, I guess. Your cards are like your creatures, in a way, Mm -hmm. and they give you your abilities. So, I don't know. Pretty cool. Weird. Final Fantasy Japanese game. It's uh, it scratches the itch, though. Nice. Okay. Anything else? I'm still on my gaming sabbatical. I have not not sat down and given anything time. Mm, damn it! Because I'm I'm trying so hard to get to game time in, but it's just I'm... the 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 cards are stacked against me. I'm enjoying not playing anything really. Like it's. it's really I nice. actually was was really excited to get home to play some video games. Uh, and I will be able to do so tomorrow. Nice. What's coming out soon? I mean, what, what is there? Uh, Gravity Re- Rush Re- 2 for me. Resident Evil Tales of Viseria. Viseria, maybe. Yeah. They come out on the same day, the 24th. Again, I'm going to wait for reviews. I want to see how the performance is on the computer for Viseria. Because I know Zisteria had some performance issues. And uh, Symphonia, I know, had a lot of trouble. At launch. January 
Yeah, that's fourth, yeah. Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. I work nights every day that week. Of course. That sucks. So you won't be on the podcast that week? Um, I'm off that Thursday, so okay. that actually works off. I will, I'll try uh-huh. to do it on Thursday. Okay. And I'm currently um, putting your feedback together. Excellent. Uh, let me yeah, send next, it to you. Okay. Next week's episode will be uh, we'll be covering the switch in depth because the the event is about an hour and twenty minutes away. I was hoping I already to feel me no, me uh, nuts tingling. Oh, I know. I'm get I'm getting psyched. Uh, but I'm also prepping myself for some disappointment because it's Nintendo and well, you can't have the good without the bad. Oh, god damn it. You know something's going to disappoint us about it. It's yeah, probably be... the number of systems they're going to put out to buy. Yeah, I bet you you're right. If they do that artificial uh, scarcity thing like they did with the Wii, I will not be happy. I'm going to be so pissed. All right, Dan, feedback has been sent. Cool. Yeah, and then tomorrow they're doing tree house. Uh, I don't know if it's an all-day thing, but they're doing a treehouse event for the Nintendo Switch. I think it starts at 930 yeah. So for those interested in watching, is it not? It's nine thirty Eastern, right? I I believe you're right. Or is it nine thirty Pacific? I think it's Eastern. Okay. Well, that would be six thirty in the morning. Pacific. I don't know. I looked at. It, I, can't, <laughs> I can't remember. And if it's if it's tree if it's treehouse, then it's in Seattle. So I would guess it's probably t- it would be twelve thirty mm. Eastern. Nine thirty Pacific. I'll look it up in a minute. I'm just waiting for the email to get here. La di da di da. Oh, come on. Come on, Internet. Clean it up. Well, it's the uh, it's probably Skype's fault. Skype needs to hog all of my bandwidth. There it is. Hey. All right. First is from Idaho Jake, who says, sorry, not much to say, but I do have an Idaho Jake question of the week. What third party game do you want to be on the Switch? Thanks, guys, and carry on. What third party title would you most want to see on the Switch? Um, I guess I don't really care about that because I have the other consoles. It doesn't really make any difference to me. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see a console exclusive that I can't get on PC yeah. on the Switch, though I can't think of one specific one that I... That's the thing, like, I, 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 see. I don't... The Switch isn't a hardware powerhouse, you know, so it's like I don't yeah. really want to play anything on the Switch except for things that are only going to be on the Switch. I don't know. Right. Maybe an indie like a Stardew Valley or something like that would be nice, but... I can imagine that'll be on there at some point. That'd be fun to play on the go, I guess, once uh, the co-op is implemented and everything. Stardew? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of a cop-out answer, but... it's all I got. Yeah, I can't think of anything specific. Like, it would be like a Destiny, or I, I know I put the, the the games on my list for Please Stop Award, but like an NHL... Maybe well, I would probably play on the Switch, the third party title, but not probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Oh, old time hockey. Old time hockey. <laughs> that couch co-op. That'd be great. That you could do like sure. Wi or uh, yeah, Wi-Fi uh, competitive in the same room, you know, with other people on your yeah. Switch. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good stuff. Um, something specific. I you know again I go back to like this the Skyrims and I you know I probably wouldn't play anything like that on the Switch when I can play it on my computer. Same. Um, yeah, I know that's not a good answer, but uh, moving on. Thanks, Jake. This is from Miguel in Valencia, who says, "What's up, gentlemen? Hope this year we can make TSA great again by getting Eric a game he will enjoy." The 2016 Eric was more unsatisfied with video games than Steve Jobs with Apple products. <laughs> uh, or Corey, who will finally purchase a top tier game this year at full price. No, Corey, Super Mario Run doesn't count. Ah. Well, what you, that didn't count when you said top tier. 
<laughs> Top tier. Uh, and for God's sake, can we please get Dan some sleep? Poor guy has me feeling exhausted when listening to his daddy duties. Starting a fundraiser to get Dan and his wife a nanny for the week so they can catch some sleep. That would be amazing. And again, I go back to it's not it's not the kid stuff that's the pain in the butt. It's everything else. It's all the freaking cleaning that you have to do. And food. One thing they do not warn you about, no one warns you about when you become a parent, is how often you have to get food. Like, literally all day I'm getting... You know, stra- I'm cutting up strawberries, cutting up apples, cutting up pears, getting goldfish, getting a drink, getting no- like I'm a just an unpaid waiter Dan, all day. Dan, what? what? Give a man a fish, feed him a day, teach a man to fish. No, I know we're working on feed that now with the older time. one. <laughs> we're we're working on that with the older one. Uh, he's starting to become a lot more uh, independent. But anywho. And of course, Sir William, who I predict this year, the dude will be catching a rare but real pokey girlfriend. <laughs> Of course, after he gains more experience in his new job role, he might learn a cheesy line or two for the ladies. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I love a good pun. I actually, not to change the subject, but read uh, that there was a study done that if you don't like puns, you have there's some mental health issues Ooh. with you. I didn't read why. The why is the important part, I which I, I, I usually like to cover, but I, I didn't didn't read it. Anyhow, as for me, I will work on my grammar more. Regardless of what happens, gentlemen, I wish you all a great new year and let this year of gaming bring joy to all of us once again, especially for Eric, L-O-L-J-K. Anyways, I wanted to send a shout out to Tito in L.A. for his tips on Destiny a few weeks back. Thanks, Tito. This question goes to Dan and Corey, given your primary gaming platform is a PC. PC wasn't available for gaming. What? What uh, one platform would you say you guys would have grown customs to? Also, tell us a little of your history on how you got into PC gaming and why PC gaming over other gaming platforms. Now, this is coming from a guy who knows little of PC gaming and its perks. Anyways, gentlemen, thanks for the podcast. Let's make Thumbstick Athletes great again. Avenger out. Thanks, Avenger. Absolutely. I like the optimism. I do. I do. So let's let's start a fresh year with 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 fresh optimism. This year, Corey and I will like video games. Like you guys are going to like video games. That's again. a tall task. That is a tall <laughs> task. Well, I think I think Eric's kind of right. We'll answer uh, Avengers question in just a second, but Eric uh, Eric's kind of right with that. Things are starting to get a little bit stale. I think video games are starting to turn into movies and television. I, so I think it's a great comparison. Like, how many cop dramas can you do on TV? You know, like, it's just... Entertainment in general is getting stale. Yeah. Maybe we're just getting old, guys. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we're just old curmudgeons. So, Corey, PC yeah. wasn't available for gaming. What platform would you would you be on? Probably PlayStation. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was I was our most valuable console after all. Well, I think a lot of it was timing for me. Um, I had the PlayStation three and then when I got the PC, I didn't really need the PlayStation three anymore. So I sold it, but I was in that ecosystem at that point. And I think I would have just continued that, you know, yeah. if I never got a PC. Yeah. Um, I probably would have still had my PS4 if I didn't have my PC. Yeah, that would have been my because I already had one. You know, I had one for about a year before I traded it in. Um, so that's 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 what I still have. Uh, and again, the the and Nintendo stuff because uh, that's the only place you can play Nintendo games. So there's that. Uh, wow, well, why did why did we switch to PC? You talked about that, Corey. Well. I mean, if we go way back, I think a little bit of it had to do with we were young, we couldn't afford consoles, but we could convince our parents to buy a computer to do schoolwork on. (laughs) (laughs) Supposedly. That was that was the line. We needed a new a new Dell computer, a new black Dell computer to do schoolwork on. How am I supposed uh, to write these essays, mom? Come on. This computer's crap. Yeah. If I fail, it's your fault, Mom. <laughs> Drop that line before. Like when I wanted to it, borrow it, the uh, the escape to go on one of my adventures with friends, they'd say no, and I'd be like, well, what, do you want me to get in a car accident and die with my car? <laughs> and then it's like, 
<laughs> what are they mm. supposed to do? What are they supposed to say then? Yeah. Um, for me, what what when I switched over to PC as my primary platform was playing uh, Assassin's Creed Three, and just hating it so much. I rage quit the game. I packed up all my Xbox 360 shit and traded it in, and then I started using my my computer that I had gotten a few months prior. Yeah, that's when I started loading up my Steam library and and stuff, and that's when it became my my primary platform. But yeah, I mean, like I've had gaming computers at various times throughout my life. When I first moved into, or I built a big gaming computer right before I moved out of my parents' house. Uh, that was the first computer like I like I built myself, and uh, you know, did a lot of gaming on that. Replaced parts as needed, um, and then what? Oh, and that that computer fried, and I ended up getting a Dell computer to game on after that. Because I was too lazy to like look up what what parts I needed or you know all that stuff, uh, and then I got a laptop, which I gamed a little bit on. I remember, I remember playing uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic oh, yeah. on this laptop that I record on it, and it ran at like like ten, 10 frames, frames per, per second. second. Yep, <laughs> I went through the same it was, thing. It, it was it was like a, a slide sh- playing a slideshow, which I could never in a million years do now. No, uh, but it, but it was okay to play Star Wars: The Old Republic, you know, when it first launched. We're spoiled. I think, Very spoiled. yeah, I guess what kind of strung me along all, all these years for uh, PC gaming was MMORPGs. Yeah. Um, you know, it was EverQuest back in the day. What, what else did I? I played a little Asheron's Call here and there, which coincidentally is closing down, I think, this week. Um, EverQuest, EverQuest 2, Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, yeah, Galaxies. Uh, and then we were playing, like you just mentioned, the, the Old Republic. Um, yeah. And more recently, like with this computer, what was the driving force for this was I mentioned I had the PS3 um, and I was watching somebody play Guild Wars 2 on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I have to have this experience. It, like, uh, it was just so beautiful to me. And I was like, I, I have to do this. Um, and that's when I sprung for all the computer parts and just to play Guild Wars 2. Uh, but mm-hmm. it turns out like that sort of happened at the time when Steam was coming into its own and more yeah. and more games were coming out for PC. So it was just really good timing. And yeah. uh, with the new consoles coming out, like it seemed like less and less exclusives because more stuff was coming to PC um, and fewer exclusives that screamed to me, I need to get a console. Mm-hmm. And until that changes, I don't know, I think I'll just stick with PC and Nintendo. Sure. I still am jealous of Bloodborne, still to yeah. this day. Yeah, that's that's the one game, the one the one console one. exclusive that I'm like, God, damn it! I wish I could play that. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, and I'm with you on Bloodborne definitely, and like Final Fantasy. Well, you 15, played it. Yeah, but I had to borrow a console to do it. Sure. Uh, Final Fantasy 15, I I had to play, and I had to play yeah. it like stat. You know, it was one mm-hmm. of those games I just couldn't wait for. But again, I had Will, who was more than more than willing to offer up his console um, Mm -hmm. to play it. So, I mean, if I have that option, why would I ever buy a console? Sure. To uh, to borrow for a week or two? Yeah. Yeah. And plus, like, you can just do so much more with a PC. It's stuff that I do do, you know, like... Right. Do do. Do do. You said do do. Productivity program. You know, your Adobe, Premiere, Illustrator, Photoshop. Um... All that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's from Avenger. We had one from Tito. Yeah, from last week. From last week. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you guys did it. That's all right. I'll bring it up. I, uh, I should have mentioned it. But Uh, thanks, Jake. Thanks, Avenger. He, uh, he wanted to talk about thummies a little bit, and we said we'd wait for Eric. Oh, thank you. Plus, uh, we were, I was up against we wanted... a, a hard stop last week. <laughs> you did right. what now? I was up against a hard stop because the World Junior game was just going into overtime at that oh, point. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Sophie had been waiting for me to sit down for our dinner for probably 45 minutes. So Okay. Well, I don't want you getting in trouble. Yeah, wasn't worth it. All right, so this is from Tito in LA who says, I'd love to go over my... This is from last week, too, by the way. Uh... 
if we didn't mention that, we mentioned that already. I'd love to go over my picks for each category, but I'm too old now and I don't have the work ethic to go over each game I wanted to pick and don't care as much. And mainly my 2016 gaming list was super short. So I'll just say that Rocket League winning 2016 2015 game of the year was just as being served. <laughs> Yes. I'd also love, love to go over my thoughts on Final Fantasy 15, but I want to go a bit in depth uh, with what I love about it, so may make a deeper analysis for next week. I'll just say I love it. I love playing Aerith's theme and Final Fantasy VII's High Wind theme while driving. I love the world map music that plays as well. It's not Wanderlust that Corey showcased, but the uh, the other one with the fruit playing. Flute playing. I think that piece is beautiful. My favorite mini game is probably the fishing and the pinball game. I got pretty good at the pinball game. It's not that hard of a mini game, and did a two-hour session by accident and got a good reward out of it for my character. I'm glad my friend mentioned changing the control scheme to Type B because that made a lot made it a lot more intuitive for me. Did you guys no. change the control schemes? No, nope. Did you feel like the control scheme was intuitive? I thought it was fine. I can't really remember, so I would say yeah. It was it was fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad it won Game of the Year for Thummies. It's well deserved so far. Maybe Inside would be my second place pick. Final Fantasy 15 will pass the time nicely until Andromeda comes out or mm-hmm. Breath of the Wild once it's available. Uh, and then he put in parentheses. And I heard what Dan said about Rocket League: the difference between between being favorite game and best game. I'll just say that I'll just say Rocket League even has a great argument for best game made as well because design wise, it's nearly perfect. I'm watching you, Dan. Peace out. Tito, add a boy. Well, I I was more referencing myself when I said that. I wasn't no, I calling out uh, Rocket League. I just I never like that person that thinks that the things they like are also the things that are the best. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know that that guy. Yeah. Um, because I know like my my favorite movie of all time is is not the greatest movie of all time. Like it's just what is your favorite movie of all time? Frozen. No, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's a good movie. It is a good movie, but I w- I would anyone pick it as the best movie of all time? No, of course not. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's not the best movie ever made. <laughs> What's so. wrong with it? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's everything, right? Thanks, Tito, by the way. That uh, I wanted to mention the pinball game from Final Fantasy 15 is available on yeah. mobile. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. As a standalone, I like that. Justice Heroes Five or something like that. Hmm. That's pretty cool. And uh, he also talked a little bit about the music. I forgot to mention this uh, when we were talking about it, but one of my other favorite songs in that game is when you're riding the chocobo on land and you switch to water, and the music changes too to like a little pan flute. Like, I think I mentioned it when nice. we talked about the game when we did the, the episode on Final Fantasy 15 but I forgot to mention that during the uh, the thummies because that is special okay ow yeah sounds good uh, any other thoughts questions comments I don't believe so Dan I'm really excited for the switch presentation this evening yeah, yeah we got about an hour I'm very excited I gotta go switch some funds around mm-hmm. just in case I'm gonna make some yeah. popcorn yeah, very nice. Try to watch. Ex- explain to Sophie why I, I have to stay up. Best hunting to you, jo- uh, Corey, are you going to try and pre-order? I don't know. Probably not. And the only reason is I, I don't know if I'm ever going to use it. Fair, Fair enough. I, like, I play Zelda, but I don't know. I want to play Dragon Quest Builders if that comes to the Switch. I don't know. Why is that not on Steam? Or is it? It's not. No. I would have it if if it was. It's on PS4, right? Yeah. In Vita? <clears throat> is it on Vita? Yeah, it Vita. is. Or is it Vita. 3DS? No, it's on Vita, too. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping okay. that's like we'll a see. Games with Gold at some point. If it blows <laughs> me away tonight, <laughs> yes. I, I will pre-order it, but I'll just have to figure that one out financially later on. Well, well, you should as with say, just do the Amazon do the Amazon placeholder. Yeah. Yeah, and then you don't even have to worry about it. Just cancel it if you decide you don't want it. Yeah. I'm hoping it goes f- for pre-order on Amazon cuz that would that would work out best for me. That's my worry. Yeah. And cuz Nintendo and Amazon haven't always been buddy buddy. So I feel like it's gotten better. It has gotten better. Yep. 
Well, and it is at very least listed on their website. Yep. I have it saved on my wish list. Yeah, I, and, I actually and, have the Switch page opened up right now on yep. Amazon, GameStop, and uh, Best Buy. Oh, good call. And keep refreshing. Keep refreshing. I've Come done midnight, it multiple maybe. times during this podcast. Oh, just in case they do a surprise? Just in case. That's smart. I'm going to go do up, go upstairs and do that right now. Uh, that being said, that'll do it for episode 286 of the Thumbs Up Athletes podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Eric. Corey. Thanks for listening, and get out of my basement. Done. Done. All right. Hey, I- oh!